Now, I always get asked how to do lens distortion inside of camera tracking with Blender, and so today I'm gonna show you just how to do that. Before we get started, I just wanna say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon members. If you wanna check out all of the amazing perks that we offer, I will have a link down in the description below. Now, if you're only looking for the solution, you can see it right on the screen here. This is how we wanna go ahead and set up our compositor for lens distortion, but I'll, uh, throughout the rest of the video, I'll show you exactly how to get it to here and some of the steps along the way. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it. I went ahead and camera tracked this scene already. I have plenty of tutorials going exactly how I did it. But as you can see, the only thing I've done is I set up the background and tracking scene and then went ahead and set up our floor and everything like that. Again, super, super simple. I'll have some videos down in the description below if you wanna see exactly how I do it. But we're at the point now where we need to go ahead and deal with some lens distortion because we need to go into the CGI stage. Now lens distortion, what it is, basically every single lens, no matter how good it is, has some distortion on the ends uh, if you come in over here on the salt tab you want to make sure in this process you're refining uh, the focal length the optical center and radial distortion these uh, two lower things right here these are to do with the lens distortion of the actual camera if i come out to the layout view so just the 3d viewport go into our camera you can see a few things have been set up by default just to make things easier i'm going to delete our foreground and background collection and uh, basically everything besides our camera so we just have the camera into the scene let's go ahead and make the background images fully opaque like that and there you go now you can see we have everything camera tracked uh, and we have this button down here not a lot of people know what it does but it is it is the render undistorted if we have this not checked it's not distorting the footage at all this is the original footage with nothing done to it uh, but since it has it checked by default you can see it's adding some distortion into it it might be a little bit hard to see but over here it's actually stretching out the actual footage so that it adds the lens distortion into the actual camera now depending on what camera you actually use it might have more distortion it might have less uh, this is shot on my iPhone, and so you can see we don't have a ton of ton of distortion, but you can see that distortion is crushing the footage in. And so we just want to keep that in mind because some cameras actually will uh, push the uh, footage out. And so uh, depending on your lens, it will heavily affect the distortion. But the reason we want to make note of this is because uh, we have a nice straight line here. If I turn this off, you can see it's a little bit more curved. It might be a little bit hard to see, especially up here. You can see it's very curved up here. But if we turn this on, you can see it's tries to straighten out that line as much as possible. And so Blender is pretty all right with this stuff. Uh, you know, it's decent, I would say, synthize, which I use for my own visual effects is much, much better for uh, lens distortion, but Blender does a decent enough job for what we need it for. Anyways, for lens distortion, uh, to go ahead and demonstrate this, I'm gonna go add a mesh plane right here and let's go ahead and try to orient the scene. I have this nice countertop that is uh, very straight on both the X and the Y axis so we can go ahead and position that. Uh, now real quickly I do want to be uh, working inside of Eevee just for this demonstration purposes because we're going to be rendering out some tests so that we can see uh, some of this stuff. Next thing I need to do, let's go ahead and hit tab. I'm going to right click subdivide and then shift R to just duplicate that subdivision. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to have a nice grid. Uh, we want to have something to reference the ground plane and a grid is nice because it has a lot of straight lines and especially for lens distortion, we're going to be able to tell all that nice uh, detail. Anyways, let's come over here. We're going to add a wireframe modifier and that uh, basically does this so we can actually see our grid now. We can uh, bring the thickness all the way down. So we want it to be super, super skinny, but still noticeable. So something like that. And then I'm gonna add a new material. We're gonna, instead of principled BSDF, we're gonna do an emission material. And let's just change this to like a red or maybe a blue or something that we can easily tell. Um, I did make my thing a little bit too small. So let's just multiply this by two. So 0 0.002 right there, and there you go. Now we can kind of see it more, and let's turn film transparent on so we can see it on top of our footage. There we go. So now what I want to do is I want to orient this uh, camera footage. I didn't do a great job in the camera tracking process, so you can select the camera inside of Blender, then R, Z to rotate that. I want to make sure that both the X and the Y are relatively lined up. And so if I just kind of eyeball it here, again, I am doing this inside of uh, the render undistorted checked on. Uh, whatever you're doing, uh, if you're doing any modeling of the scene, anything like that, you always want to be doing it with the render undistorted on because again, this is the uh, distorted footage. If we had this off, it wouldn't line up uh, when we add distortion back in compositing. And so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. But let's see, we are pretty lined up here. I'm not gonna do a super precise job. As you can see, uh, along this axis right here, we are along this table. And then down here, we are also along this table. So that is good enough for my needs. Let's go ahead and talk about lens distortion now. Let's come and uh, first of all, let's render out a image. So just F12, 
uh, I do want to go in the compositor and so uh, just rendering out a still frame and again the reason I'm doing EV is as you can see it instantly loaded versus cycles it will take a little bit longer uh, so we can come to compositing now Again, if you are using Blender's default uh, scene setup, it'll set up all this stuff. Uh, first of all, we have a background view layer being combined over top. Uh, I always like to set this up myself, and so we can come up here. There's a background uh, view layer up here. I'm just going to go ahead and exit out of that. And because we've deleted that, we don't need the alpha over or the render layer node. So we can plug them into here. And here is the setup that we have by default. I'll try to explain this as uh, quickly as possible, but basically what's going on is we have our uh, CGI going into an alpha over and then our footage up here. Our footage has lens distortion baked into it. And so what Blender with these nodes are doing is they're trying to remove the distortion. Right. So if we come up here and we disable them, you can see our footage is actually moving. This is actually much nicer to see up here, because now if we come to like the uh, side over here, you can see uh, there is some warping going on. It's not a perfectly square angle uh, on the side anymore. And that is to do with the lens distortion. Again, we are doing it to the footage now. The big thing we want to do is instead of doing it with the footage, I don't ever like to really touch the footage just because uh, with, you know, if we need keying or anything in compositing, it's always a get better idea yet to go ahead and apply the distortion to the CGI rather than the footage itself because we want to maintain the footage as much as possible especially for stuff like uh, denoising and keying like I mentioned before very very important we don't mess mess with the pixels of the actual footage so anyway I don't know why they have this automatically set up by default inside of Blender I wish they didn't apply it to the footage I couldn't see a reason why you would want to do it to the footage rather than the CGI. But anyway, uh, that is what these two nodes are doing. So that is applying that lens distortion we calculated using the camera tracking process. Super, super simple to go ahead and set this up. We have the CGI and that. Let's go ahead and remove this scale node. We don't need this anymore. We'll plug the movie into the alpha over. Now we just have a simple uh, layer over layer composite going on. We have our CGI composited over our footage. Uh, if you remember in the actual scene, we have uh, measured this uh, little grid right here to be exactly onto the uh, edge of the table and the edge over here. You can see it's pr doing a pretty good job. Again, uh, this footage is relatively on the low in for lens distortion so it's not going to be super super noticeable to you but you can notice if we come over here uh, there is a bit kind of miss uh, matching over here and so if you had anything on that section it would look like it's not motion track correctly most importantly and then also if you're actually modeling uh, stuff out for cgi for the scene say we're modeling out this counter to be a shadow catcher that shadow catcher is going to look like it's not sticking uh, perfectly to the edge and stuff like that so in order to get it to actually stick to the edge we're going to put this movie distortion node uh, into the render layer socket again we want to uh, go ahead and do everything uh, lens distortion to our CGI not our footage and so we have this down here now by default it's set to undistort undistort is for footage and then distort is for CGI if you think about the entire process uh, the footage natively has lens distortion into it and so when we want to affect the footage we want to undistort that lens we want to get that lens distortion out and so it would be undistorting the footage versus if we want to uh, add distortion into our CGI to match the distortion of our footage we need to distort the uh, CGI I know it's it's a little bit confusing when you uh, start out with. I remember being super confused about that why because uh, I thought it should have been the opposite. But when you think about it, it makes a little bit more sense. Anyways, uh, we'll change undistort to distort down here. And now you can see it's distorting our CGI and that line that we have established in the uh, kind of uh, 3D viewport up here is perfectly matching in the compositor right here. You can see both the top and the bottom lines are perfectly matching now. And so this is the lens distortion correctly applied inside of Blender. There are a few drawbacks. Uh, to my knowledge, there aren't any workarounds to this yet natively inside of Blender. I wish there were. But the first being is certain distortion that you might have on your own footage might warp the uh, CGI up. And then you're going to have a little bit of a seam down here. You know, uh, for my footage, since the distortion is pushing the CGI outwards, it's not going to uh, affect us too much. But uh, just keep that in mind. If you do have lens distortion, that's actually pushing the uh, shrinking the CGI in. Uh, I have a, another camera that I use that uh, the lens actually does that. Uh, you'll have a little bit of a thing down here. The only way, unfortunately, to do it inside a blender natively in uh, in my experience is to just 
crop in the entire image to remove that. Uh, that is not the ideal way. Uh, the ideal way would be to over scan the actual uh, thing and then to bring that in. Uh, there's actually a add on I use if I'm doing a, a professional camera tracking method and stuff using Synthize and Nuke for compositing. I actually have this add on over here, uh, the over scan add on. I'll have a link down below. I've tried to test that with the blender uh, method and stuff like that, but it seems like this movie distortion node is heavily tied to the resolution of uh, you know whatever your camera tracking and stuff like that. So unfortunately I had uh, no, I, uh, no way to actually get this working natively, but let me know if you guys find out a way. I would love to hear it because uh, over scanning your CGI is very, very important. Uh, now the final thing I quickly would just want to note before we end the, off this video is uh, when you're uh, distorting, it's gonna be more pronounced at the edges. And so if I on and off this movie distortion, you'll see uh, it's very kind of sharp and stuff. Our CGI is over here. Uh, but as we add distortion in, it's distorting the actual pixels and everything. And so it is blurring it out a little bit, right? And so this would be maybe to where uh, if you were doing your compositing in another program or anything like that, say you're only doing uh, this inside a blender, this is where you would come up to the resolution and maybe, you know, set 110% of the resolution, stuff like that. It's the same aspect ratio, so it won't really throw it off too much. Uh, but now we have more detail in these areas so that when we stretch it and stuff, we're not accidentally blurring the image and stuff like that. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense of why you would do uh, something like that. Uh, that is separate from over scanning because uh, when we over scan, we actually uh, increase the border of what we're rendering versus resolution. It's going to be that same border uh, just in a larger resolution. So hopefully that makes a little sense. I just wanted to call attention there. Uh, this is in 4K. So honestly, I don't really deal with it in 4K, but that is pretty much it. This is how you would do lens distortion inside a blender. Uh, just something that a lot of people forget to do is this movie distortion node because it's a little bit confusing. Uh, I used to actually teach to go ahead and fully delete it uh, until I actually realized myself uh, what I was doing. And so just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, movie distortion into the CG and then render that out. If you were rendering to Nuke or a uh, Fusion or anything like that, you would just plug this into the composite node and render out like that. Unfortunately, you do have to bake in that distortion inside a blender. To my knowledge, there's no way to go ahead and export that out versus like uh, using an ST map and stuff like that that might be a workaround uh, but as you can see it makes it super easy just for a movie distortion node inside of blender and so that is it lens distortion is very important to master as a visual effects artist so hopefully this video has made it a little bit easier for you Anyways, thanks so much for watching and make sure to check out my Kickstarter Visual Effects Oasis for free HRIs footage and everything else in between for every single visual effects artist.